At first, like when I started, I was pretty stressed out because we had all these shows but lined up, and we were, you know, it was like crunch time. And I don't tend to get nervous, but like it was, it was a lot of pressure. I think so far it's been really positive. We've became a better band. We've grown a lot. Uh, we practice a lot more. We're getting a lot tighter. Uh, I think we're doing really good. Since Ian and Ryan joined the band, it's freed up a lot of stress with me and Skinny because they both are really um, good about practicing regularly. We practice at least three to four times a week now, whereas before we were practicing once a month, maybe twice, sometimes once every three months, and it wasn't really working. But they, the biggest thing that they do is they bring a lot of energy and creativity to how they approach the new songs and the old songs, as well as take a really active part in trying to get us uh, shows and kind of really expanding the types of people we play to and the types of shows we play and kind of getting out of one particular subculture and kind of getting a, a more broad, broader reach for for the band. It's a really good way for me to think about all the things I hate, like pop and pop punk and emo and club rap and that stuff, and just get on stage and just smash it. Like I can use my voice and just use my feet and just stomp and punch and just yell as loud as I can, like hit people in the audience if I want. It's a really good way to get out of aggression. <laughs>
our first show was in uh, Brooklyn and Bushwick uh, at a place called Don Pedro's. Uh, I was kind of like, I don't know, I was kind of like, didn't know what to expect first time being in the East Coast playing a show out here. I didn't really think anybody would come out, honestly, but uh, it was great. There was a good turnout, probably about 40, 50 people there, and people were going crazy for us. It was probably the best uh, reaction we've had ever, like any show we've ever played. <laughs> a good really really good audience reaction I've never played to a, a crowd that was mostly skinheads brought in a lot of energy and they like there's a couple fights and stuff but uh, all in all it was a good time like everybody had fun uh, even the probably even the people that got in fights the show was uh, really good it was a uh... Fist fight that broke out, which is always good at a good punk show. Um, I thought Ares and Graces definitely ripped it. Uh, they were a little apprehensive about themselves, thinking they didn't do such a good job, but I didn't agree with them. Um, definitely ripped it up. <laughs> The show was really good. We got a really good response for being really far away from home. I thought I actually think they played better the first night. No, better the second night than the first night. Uh, the reaction was better the first night though. But that's just how New York is. You know. I was pretty hungover. We had to wake up at what, seven, seven in the morning, and then drove, which took us seven hours to get there with traffic and stops, which sucked. So we got there and. Uh, the day show was already going on, so we went there, checked some bands out, and then we played. Um, we opened the 21 and Plus show. Uh, I thought we played pretty good, but the reaction wasn't the same. There was a lot of people watching us, but it just they weren't really into it, going, moving around too much, but it was cool. It was fun. There's a cover! How are you feeling? Right. Like they left for yeah. like we left that like, Get a chunk? Uh it could yeah, it's like, like you know, and it's like stuck right block, there. Right? Yeah. So we left yeah, like a half hour like that right now. Now. I think when I walked around. Then they fucking drove back here. No, they got on a train. Oh, they took a train? Yeah. I thought they were driving. the the Brits, the Christian from here, took a train. I thought they were driving back. No, no, they drove back. They told me they stopped the pizza by my house. Oh. I thought they took the train with everyone else. Well, Boston was difficult because the drive took forever and then we got lost in Boston, so by the time 
we got there, I was pretty tired, and we had to wait a couple hours to even play. And the setup of the show was kind of odd because it was uh, next to a movie being filmed and there was a lot of distractions. But uh, once we started playing, we did a good job after I switched amps because I blew a second amp at that show. And we kind of did the same thing, ordered our, our set to where everything was pretty much our fast songs to kind of keep momentum going. And we got a pretty decent uh, response there, a little more toe-tapping of the crowd than New York was. Uh, cause, so it was kind of interesting to go from batshit crazy to kind of more subdued. Good afternoon, you're listening to Modern Products on East Village Radio. Your host, Harris Smith, here with you every Sunday from 2 to 4 on eastvillageradio.com and on iTunes Radio under the Eclectic section. And I am joined in the studio today by the band Airs and Graces. And uh, uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Introduce yourselves again. Start. Um, Ryan, I play bass. I'm skinny, I play drums. I'm Ian. Is this on? I'm Ian yeah. and I sing. My yeah. Try it again. I'm Ian and I sing. I'm Tim and I play guitar. Cool. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to New York. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. So. The kids need to learn from an older generation. Because we're the ones. Uh, is playing shows most of the time you know we don't really get a guarantee because we're you know still a smaller band so we go and you know try to sell some merchandise um, usually you know you make a little bit at the door you know, not too much, but enough to usually fill up your tank and sometimes pay for hotels. But, yeah, usually, you know, you're pretty broke. So, here's the merch box. This is all logistical materials that we set up before we play. One dollar buttons. Uh, and then we had the Social Club Scars, which we sold a few of these. I was kind of surprised um, because they've been out for a while and we've sold like 500 of them already. Then we have the shirt, um, which we were selling for 10 and we sold a lot of them actually. I mean, this bucket was stuffed to where you couldn't get anything in it and the lid was bulging, so um, it was pretty pretty good amount of shirts we sold. And then we had two EPs. We had the split with the broadsiders that we were selling. And we had the Airs and Graces split, or the Airs and Graces EP. As well as a CD EP which we're, we sold out of. So there's no more of that. Which, this was the CD EP. The first bit of shows were not the best as far as sales. We didn't do too well in LA and San Diego. We sold maybe 20 records in, in those four shows, but after that, um, we started picking up, and by the end of the tour, well, it paid for all our hotels except for the last day, so we did, we did pretty good. I mean, we sold a lot of records and tapes, or records and CDs, so. I, I can say that the, the touring was beneficial beyond playing the shows and that we sold a lot of shit online the next day. So we would play a show and the next day there would be a lot of orders 
that helped us out a lot. Uh, we have like a PayPal account, and it seemed like every day, like people from all around the world and were buying our records on the internet. So that was helping us out a lot because it would just get transferred to our uh, PayPal account, and we use that a couple times for gas and hotels. So getting your name out there and touring is really the uh, engine for the economic machine behind a band, I guess. On tour, you feel like I I want to go home. I'm homesick, or I don't have a any food or I'm not getting paid anything for this this show or that show and um, you know driving all day but in all honesty if you're on tour you're living everybody's dream everybody wants to you know be on the road and playing music um, it's something you really can't take for granted it's an opportunity of a lifetime there's many horrible things though about it that people don't think about um, I love touring. I wish I could do it all the time, like not work, just tour and not be home. It's fun just to be in a different city every day and just meet new people, see new things. Just like you. <laughs> ah, well, uh... Ryan, move your head really quick. No, to the side. No, down. No, just like go like that. There's a reason you have something to say Makes you feel good and maybe they will pay If there's a reason that you make this today Rip it, get something off, you wanna play Cause I don't wanna live in your empire In your empire, baby Just the world has been Cause I don't 